King Saul and his men, David's brothers, shot it back. Okay. Now, how long was Goliath doing this? Does anyone know? How long was he doing this for? 40 days. I mean, this man was shouting for 40 days. That's a lot of shouting. 40 means, Bible uh, symbolically means full cycle. It rained for 40 days, fed up for 40 days, served God for 40 days. Symbolically, it means full cycle, complete cycle. So, for 40 days, the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. And like the previous verse said, he was shouting. Shouting defiance. Shouting anger, hatred. Okay? Let's keep in mind. Now let's read a few verses. And I want you to look at the verse carefully. And I want to point out something you never saw before. I can guarantee you never saw before because I never saw it. Probably you saw it by the Holy Spirit before I saw it. But just read these eight verses, eight or nine verses, and I'll show you something that the Holy Spirit showed me that was like, wow, I opened to me, okay? 1 Samuel 17, 42 to verse 50. And he looked, David, he is, who is he? Goliath. Goliath looked David over uh, and saw that he was little more than a boy. Just little more than a boy. Glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him, despised David. The next verse. And he said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Okay? And the Philistine said, Come here. He said, Come here. I will give you a flush to the birds and the wild animals. And here comes David. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine, uh, Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or by or spear that the Lord says, For the battle is the Lord, and he will give all of you into our hands. And as the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. What we just made you ready here, there was a conversation between Goliath and David, right? Mm -hmm. But who spoke the last words? In between both of them, David and Goliath, who spoke the last words? It was David. Goliath for the very first time having someone who will have the last word. For 40 years, he always had the last word. For 40, sorry, 40 days, he always had the last word. When he shouted back that day, day one, that was it. No one shouted back at him. Day two, come and shout defiance against God. No one shouted back to Goliath the word that day two was the last day, last word. That went on for 40 days. Now comes a, someone a little bit older than a boy, and when Goliath speaks, that wasn't the last word any longer. Right. That wasn't the last word. David said, I will speak now. Right. And once David spoke, that's it. He put a stop to Goliath's last words. Right. Right. What an attitude. And so David, all he wanted was what came out of his mouth through the Holy Ghost. He did not remember what all Goliath said because he contradicted that with God's word by the Holy Ghost and he spoke it. And after he spoke it, he sprang into action. When you speak the last word to your problem, it's easy to spring into action. Whatever the Goliath might be in your life, he wants the final word in your life. One of the problems is he wants the final word. 
this is sickness limited. You say, no, I have a final word from the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. See, King Saul and his army, they could not say the last word to Goliath. And because they could not say the last word, the last words they remembered were the words of Goliath. Is that true? The last words playing in their mind, you know, thinking is the words of Goliath. But David was going to buy those things. Goliath spoke, and it was David's turn to speak. He spoke. That was it. You will never see Goliath speaking again. You will not see Goliath asking back again. That is the attitude of Jesus. What are the problem or struggle that you have in your life? We got to give the final word out. We got to say, I have the final word from the Lord. Hallelujah. And Jesus, he demonstrated this on the cross of Calvary. To the enemy, it looked like a defeat. And he looked like, oh, the Son of God, the King of Kings is crucified. No. Christ finished his ministry. He finished his race with final word. Is that true? He didn't say, well, I'm dying here. God, God, please forgive his people. And no, after I was asking Father, forgive his people who were crucifying him. He Ended his life, his ministry on earth as a human being with a final word, just like David. And what did he say? It is finished. It is finished. It is, and the word finished, I looked up in Greek, it means completed. It means executed. It means accomplished. What's not explained here? It means it's, it's done, it's finished. It means it's over, it's finished, meaning it's victorious. And the truth is, we have this final word in us. Yes. Because we have the Spirit of Christ in us, we have the final word that same David had years ago by the Holy Ghost to Goliath. Can we say amen? amen. Recently, again, dealing with demons, I realized that demons wanted to have the final word. I said, demon, you get out. No, you get out. You leave. No, you leave. You leave. Get out of the house. You leave by the front door. I'm just defying me, mocking me. And whatever I said, wanted to contradict you. Whatever I spoke, wanted to find a word. And it became like a fight, as Jack said. We are sparring. And I want to make sure I have the final word. Yeah. I have the yeah. final word. I'm not going to let you have the final word. No way, no how. You know why? Even before I went there, the Holy Spirit told me the final word. Now, I didn't understand what he was telling me about the final word. It's the final word. And final word. Then when I went to the battlefield and I'm battling, that reminded me, ah, I'm going to keep. So even took 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I made sure my word was final word. And finally, the demon said, I'm leaving. Get out, leave. Very often, Problems in our life, what are the final words? It could be financial struggles, or future seems gloomy, or sickness, or problems, or trouble. No, and sometimes we came into it. We just, okay. And we speak it, it's not going. We, we, say, we quote promises of God, and we shout, and we say it, and the enemy is defiant, like the light, and speaks back. And sometimes we sort of said, our quietness makes the enemy to give the final word. And speaking in this aspect, some may know this, I made one of the biggest mistakes in my life in ministry of not saying the final word. Some people know what I'm talking about. That, what that was, for those who don't know, I was doing mission work in Papua New Guinea. I just got there and after two weeks, they flew me over to another place to have a national youth conference. And because I was the new exotic being, you know, <laughs> they made me speak every day. Anyway, and there was this young teenage girl who was manifesting crazily, and so I told the pastor, "Where she didn't do this. He said, yeah, you don't know how to deal with that. I said, okay, um, I'll help you out. So, um, long story short, demons at the end, after a few hours of battle, got completely set up free, completely free. She went into heaven and the trance came back. Anyway, before the demon left, the spirit of Satan left, and here's the main point. He said, 
I believe, because you've been using authority, fighting, I will leave, but I will attack the young people. He said those words, and now it's like two in the morning, I'm half asleep, and I was quiet. I just stayed quiet. I'm like, thank you, I'm going to go to bed. You know? I didn't tell him that. I'm going to sleep two in the morning, and you know, like, thank God you're leaving, get out, leave. I didn't tell him that, but that, those were my words, thoughts in my mind. So he left. He came out, left, and victorious. And uh, I didn't really think about it. In fact, your words don't mean anything, you know. And next morning, I went to bed at 3 in the morning, and around 9 something, my co minister, um, missionary from the US, he woke me and said, Ruben, Ruben, get up, get up. I said, well, What happened? What happened? He found it urgent. Look at his photos. I said, What? There was a bus load of young people from the conference that were traveling back. There were a number of buses, but one bus flipped a number of times down the ditch from highway. That bus continued, I think about two or three dozen young people, and flipped a number of times, and thank God no one died. I think one boy had a small bruise, but no bones were broken, no one died. And when I saw these photos, and bus was total, by the way, total, when I saw these photos, I remember the words. I will leave, but I will attack the young people. And I realized I did not give my last word to it. I did not contradict it. I did not say, no, you will leave and you will not attack any young people. I did not give the last word. And I, I told this poor minister, I said, it's my fault. It's my mistake. Everybody, he said, in this country, they will sue you. You'll get a lot of money, but stay quiet. It's finished. <laughs> After spiritual, I didn't really cause it personally. It's a mistake in ministry. But that taught me a big lesson. That in any battle, any problem, I have to give the final word. Not the enemy, not the problems. And again, last Sunday, after meeting here, going home just, just praying and talking, the Holy Spirit told me final words. I don't know. What do you mean final words now? Only realized that night, a few hours, early morning, we rushed to minister. And demons were attacking and wanted to contradict and wanted to have the final word. I said, no, you're not leaving. No, you're leaving. Get out! And that demon just cursed me out. I, I heard more curses. First words that they from all my life. <laughs> just F words and B words and all the words, just H G S it's the word of God. But get going, get going. We are all that conquered through Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We all came in by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. Hallelujah. Yes. We all are given the power, cut up our serpents and scorpions, and all the power thing, nothing shall any means hurt you. I kept quoting scriptures, quoting scriptures, and you are leaving right now, and I want to go to bed. I don't want to waste your time. Get out! Leave! I shouted back, hallelujah, and God gave the victory. Yeah. God is victorious, hallelujah. And we have the victory, we have the final word in us. Look what Apostle John wrote to in 1 John, 1 John 2 verse 14, 1 John 2 verse 14 says, I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, Father, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God lives in you, and you have the evil you have overcome the evil one thank you you have overcome the evil one now why is there written young men here sort of a question why is there written young men and fathers does it mean it doesn't apply to us sisters or older people like me why is it well in those days it was young men that went to that fight there were young men and there were soldiers fighting so apostle john was comparing to the natural realm it was men who went to fight. The young men mainly went out to fight. Is that true? Soldiers. But spiritually, that applies to all of us. What I'm saying is that victory is only in us. Yes. It does not say you're going to overcome the evil one. You have overcome the evil one. That's right. We're not fighting for place of defeat. We are fighting for the place of victory. Amen. You have, it's past tense, it's done. 
you have overcome the evil one. It's done. We have the overcoming power within us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We have the final word through Christ in us. If David had by the Holy Ghost years ago by the immortal the saints, how much more now us through Christ? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you realize many Christians, when the problems come, they don't have the final word to give out. They give out, enemy gives out, they give out, enemy gives out, and that's where they stop. No! Enemy's final word is not the answer. We are the final word through Christ. That is, we are the overcoming power through Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! You have overcome evil one. So, now to write it to Hebrews, Paul, who we think wrote the epistle of Hebrews, let's see what he says up here. He says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. The NIV, we might say hope, but faith of hope without wavering. What does it mean without wavering? Well, first of all, what is profession of our faith? What is profession? Confession. Profession is to speak out. From that, you get the word professor. One who speaks out, one who decimates, one who shares. One who shares knowledge, proper sir, to profess to speak up. Hold fast the profession of our faith. Then it says, without wavering. What does it mean? In our context, what you know, in the context what we're studying, what does it mean without wavering? Make sure that your profession of faith is a final profession. Because if you waver, Everyone has a final profession. Does it make sense? If I waver, everyone won't have a final say in my problem. Whatever the problem might be, sickness, trials, emotional, mental, physical, financial, whatever it might be, whatever it might be, whatever it might be, we have the profession of faith and we hold it, let us hold fast. Let us, as his Christians, Hold fast the profession of our faith. That means we have faith. Yes. It doesn't say go get more faith, go to church to get more faith, or read my Bible to get more faith. No, when we accept Christ, His faith is in us. We have the faith, the Son of God. And the right, Hebrew says, hold that fast without wavering. Without wavering. Say it. When, when, when the problem is still there, say it. When the problem is still there, say it. When the problem is still there, say it. To your word is the final word. Yeah. Yeah. And the more you remain where your word is the final word, just like David, it's easy to act. It's easy to carry out the action when your word is the final word. Is it true that one who gives a final word has authority? What about in a, in a, in a court, judge? Who is the final word? <coughs> the judge. The prosecutors, the defendants, they argue. Man, this is the final word. Judgment is given. He has authority. And we have authority through Christ. It's amazing David knew this. Isn't that true? Yeah. It's amazing that little boy knew this by the Holy Ghost. It is, to me, it's amazing that King David, King Saul, and all the army didn't know that. To me, just, that's what I see. That little boy knew that the shut the mouth of the lion. You know what? I am the final word. I will speak and stand into action. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us hold fast. Let us hold fast the profession, profession of our faith without wavering. And if we do it, what will we experience? What will we experience? Faithfulness of God. Faithfulness of God will come after your final word. In battles, in problems, in issues, in demonic attacks, issues, faithfulness of God will manifest. Now, there are other times God's faithfulness manifests out of His mercy. But very often I've seen that when your word is a final word, God's faithfulness just manifests. When Jeremiah, the doctor said his kidney, one kidney is damaged and enlarged and 
no good. They made an appointment in effect to have it removed. Surgery was, was done. I get a final word. Kidney, you rise up. You stupid kidney. You dead kidney. That's how I spoke. My language wasn't good, it wasn't polished up. But I was mad. It wasn't academic, it wasn't high socioeconomic status language. I was mad. When you're mad, you speak about it comes your mouth. Kidney, you rise up. You function in the name of Jesus. You be healed. And you come back from a life. I ain't taking this any surgery. And I get a final word and stop it. And God did the rest. God did the rest. And God completely, completely healed. Final word. For he is painful. God is faithful. God is faithful. That's who God is. In Book of Revelation, we read, that's his name. That's his name. God is faithful. And writing to uh, Timothy, Paul is saying also in the same context. He's saying, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soul of Jesus Christ. We have the hardness in us. The good hardness. Is that true? We all are soldiers. But why endure hardness? Why? Then you can shoot the last bullet. Make sure you're the one to make the last bullet to come out of your gun. What happens if the enemy wants the last one to shoot? You're dead, you're gone. Make sure you end your heartless. That means we have the heartless of Jesus in us. That, as Jack said, that sparring, that fighting, that attitude, we have it in us. Like, just like Jesus said on the cross of Calvary, it is finished. The same attitude, the same spirit, the same mentality is within us. Hallelujah! We don't need to pray up to get it. We don't need to open up the heaven to get it. We have it in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have that heartless. So Paul, like Timothy, Timothy was a young man going through battle. Perhaps, you know, he was leading a church, a group, I don't know what he was doing, ministering, and perhaps some older guys were giving him trouble. The youth, I don't know what was going on. Paul wrote, endure heartless. Just, just endure it. Make sure that you, you remain hard as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In other words, make sure that you have the final word as a soldier of Jesus. That you have the final word in any problem that may endure. Because in Paul saying to the end your heartless, there was some problem going on, right? We don't know all about the problem, some problem. But make sure you end your heartless, then you can get the final word out. Hallelujah. 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 And so, if you look at it also uh, about the heroes of faith, just let's read some passage. Let's look at the heroes of faith. Look at one example. In Hebrews 11, if you look at the heroes of faith, one thing that is common to all of them, they have the final word. It's amazing. It's like when the Spirit of God opens your understanding, and then, ooh, you see it everywhere in the Bible. You see, oh, I didn't realize. And we'll look at one example. In Hebrews 11, 32 to 34. What more shall I say? I am, I, I do, sorry, I do not have time to tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah about David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gave what was promised, who shut the mouth of lions, quenched the uh, fury of the flames and escaped into the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. If you look at all of them, one thing that was common was they all had problems, issues, struggles, but they had the final word. Isn't that amazing? Look, look at one example. Here, look, one, just one, one, out, one out of the list. When I, Gideon, uh, name out of, pull out of the list, right? When I, Gideon, blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then blow the trumpet also on every side of all the camp and shout! I like that word shout. Shout! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. For the Lord and for Gideon! Yeah. It is the final word! Shout it! Not the Midianites, not the enemies who are persecuting us and trying to give us. We have the final word. Shout it! For the Lord and for Gideon. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And that was the final word given. And boom! The victory came. It's amazing how we can see the life of Jesus, life of apostles, life of David, others, that in a battle, they, they made sure they had the final word. They made sure they spoke the final word out. 
and that was it. When he spoke back, they spoke again. When he spoke, spoke again. I will speak till he shut up. Till you're defeated. Hallelujah. He's been only been defeated on the cross of Calvary. Amen. What about anything that might come in the future? Anything that you don't know what anyone has planned? Look what Paul, uh, Paul said about anything about the future troubles. Look what Paul said. He gave the final word. This is not trust them, but future tense. Here, he said, The Lord will rescue me from every evil word, every evil deed. That means I will be rescued from every evil work. That's the final word. And bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. I mean, Paul even spoke about the future. Isn't that amazing? I mean, in that future, the Lord will rescue me? In that future? See, he was going to speak about the current situation. Even about the future, he said, the Lord has the final word. The Lord will rescue me about the future. I think it's awesome. The Lord will rescue me from every, not some, not few, but every evil word. Anyone can throw at me all at once, but I will come out with flying colors to every evil word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I'll be preserved in the heavenly kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 So Paul, by faith, he experienced final word for now. He will experience final word for the future. I think it's amazing. The Lord will rescue me from him. From this verse, it's so clear that the Lord doesn't give evil words. It's from this verse, so clear that the Lord is not orchestrating evil actions. Opposite of what some Christians believe, the Lord is punishing me, the Lord is going to put me in trials, problems, nonsense. But the Lord, if he's going to rescue you, he's not going to put you in problems. The Lord will rescue me from every evil word. That's the final word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we have the final word, and we know that all things, even the battles take some long to fight, some time to fight, we know that all things they work together for good. All things working for good. If you're not seeing the good yet, it's not the end yet. If you're not seeing the good to your problem, it's not the end yet. Speak giving the final word. If it's not good, it's not the end yet. I'll say it again. If it's not good, it's not the end yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called upon His purpose. All things. What the enemy may throw at you? Who cares? We are victorious. Hallelujah. Amen. God can turn all for good. Good is my end to every problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because through Christ, I have the final word. Yeah. If I'm in the cross of Calvary, Christ gave the final word. Yeah. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. That was the final words of Jesus. I have the same words in me. I have the same attitude. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I'm sharing with you is not just some you know, mystical theory or thought. This is a reality. This is a reality. I can tell you stories on stories and some of you can tell stories on stories. Anyone wants the final word, you say, no, I have the final word. By the way, in fact, final words, I turn the cross of Calvary, and I will implement those final words. I will enforce those final words. Hallelujah. I will magnify those final words. Hallelujah. As Hebrew we read, hold fast the profession of our faith without bearing. I will do it. And I will see the faithfulness of God in my life. Hallelujah. I will take no defeat as an answer. No, I will not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Like I said, someone said before, you know, we start a problem and the end is a victory, and the meantime is meantime, and the meantime can be mean. Is that true? And the meantime is really mean, and that's when emotions all get stirred up and trouble and oh, depression. Oh God, who do I call? Who do I text? That's all good, but you have the final world living in you. As much as anyone wants to make the meantime mean, you make it mean to him. Through the final word that you have. The final words, my Lord, I took the cross of Calvary, those are the final words. And I will, I will enforce it. I will magnify it. Hallelujah. I will give it out. Just like David did. Just like David did. That King Saul and his army, with all the army, 
could not give a final word to Goliath. But the little boy cannot give a final word. What a shame when King sold an army, right? The big guys, weapons and armory and experience and whatnot, they could not give a final word to Goliath. They had no final word to Goliath. But little David comes and gives a final word to Goliath and that's it. Goes to the actions. The more you grow in the experience of giving final word, the more you realize that putting into practice of action is easy. It's easy. When, when enemies put the final words for it to enforce the final words of Jesus, it's been difficult. It's hard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Come here, come here, come here. Come here. Yeah? How are you? This is Debbie. Good morning. Debbie is from Philippines. She came as a child to Canada, 11 years old, 11, yes. and she grew up here. She has four wonderful children, they're here. They're over there. Yes, they're there. She, for farmers might be good news, she works as an agriculture research scientist. So she gets the molecular DNA, do you modify seeds? No. Okay. Do you modify seeds? No, we don't. No, no. <laughs> anyway, she's a scientist. For those who are farmers, they get some knowledge from about seeds, you can ask her questions. Oh, no. But <laughs> anyway, she's a humble sister. But God gave victory to the family. Is that true? God did so much for you. Chess yes. the next Sunday, Sunday after. Uh, Whenever you can. Well, one of the, the miracles that God has given us was. Don't share now? Sure. Oh. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, okay. Oh. My daughter, Catherine, um, she was born, she's allergic to. To eggs, seafood, shellfish, mustard, and everything else that you could think of. And then um, a week ago, I met Ruben and Sheila, and then they prayed over Catherine, and um, she's no longer allergic. Amen. Just one time, you can share the whole story later in detail, because you might not know stuff. But how many times did you call, have to call that moves? Oh, uh -huh. 20 times or so. Let me, because uh, my other two daughters also have epilepsy. They have seizures, and the seizures started for Catherine um, in July 2018, and then with Dana, it started in November 2018. So, like, they would have seizures um, back and forth, one after the other. And then uh, it's scary for mom to see. Like, it's going for that. And then, uh, the doctors were saying you couldn't see anything, everything's normal. As soon as we get to the hospital, like, we would go to the paramedic, took my home. And then they would take them to the hospital, and 10 minutes later, they'd say, just go home. Everything's okay. You know, and then, um, oh, that's okay. <laughs> God healed. Yes, he sure did. He drew many shows, helped in the prayers. It's, it's a big struggle. Go give me a day. Go have a final word. Hallelujah! Yes. All I did, like a postman, even a postman, all he does is if someone writes a big check, thousand, ten thousand dollars, right? Someone writes, he just takes the big check and delivers to the person. I'm like a postman, that's all I am. Is that true? Yeah. I'm like a postman. Power of God, God, power of God. There it is. <laughs> I'm just a postman, that's all it is. He's a postman. Postwoman, is that true? Yeah. We just can't do it. But God gets all the glory. Amen. God gets all the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is finished. Hallelujah. Amen. It is finished. God is good. In your life, you tell God, do not send up anything less than a final word. Yes. Can you say amen? Amen. I hope I convinced you through the word of God example that we have the final word through Christ. Yes. What about my, even about the future seems gloomy or unclear about the current situation. Whatever it is, nothing is hard for God. Nothing is hard for God. Hold fast the profession of faith without wavering, for He is faithful. He is faithful. Yes. God is faithful. Yes. 
He is faithful. Can you all say God is faithful? God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is faithful. And people that doubt the faithfulness of God are the ones who are not able to keep saying the final word. Like, hold fast the profession of our faith. Hold fast the profession of faith. We do it. The next part says, we talk waver. We talk waver. I mean, there's no doubt. I'm going to keep prophesying it. I'm going to keep saying the name of Jesus. Even the problem lasts for 40 days or 40 years, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Like David did, like Jesus did, I'm going to say it. And I will see God's faithfulness. God is only faithful. God is only faithful. That's who God is. <coughs> Amen? Should we stand if you don't mind? So okay, stand. Let's just stand. Let's just take a moment to thank God for his faithfulness. It does not say he shall be faithful. It says he is faithful. That's who God is. God is faithful. 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 Yes. That's who my God is. God is faithful. God is faithful. To bring out of your miseries, your financial struggles, your sicknesses, your problems, mental struggles, emotional struggles, physical struggles, God is faithful. Yes. Yes. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Hold fast the profession of your faith. Yes. So just to take a moment to where we are, just to praise God, thank God for his faithfulness. And as you're urged by the Holy Ghost, like Jesus did, like David did, speak out the final word to the problem. David did not speak to God. He spoke to Goliath. Christ said, speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. It shall obey you. Maybe you spoke once. Maybe you spoke twice. Maybe you spoke 20 times. Maybe you spoke 50 times. Maybe you spoke 1,000 times. Don't waver. Don't waver. But you say, Ruben, how long do I keep going? Don't stop. The final word is in you. The final word is in you. The final word. That are from the cross of Calvary, they're in you. It is finished. It is accomplished. It is finished. We have the victory. We are just only enforcing the victory. We are only implementing. We are only magnifying the victory that we already have through Christ. We are not trying to get new victory. No, it's only been accomplished the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. And right now, right now, let's speak the problem. And say, in the name of Jesus, you, Goliath, you appear like a champion, but you ain't a champion. You seem like a champion, but you're not a champion. You show to be a champion, you're not a champion. This is what my God will do to you. This is what my God will do to you. And I will keep declaring, I will keep speaking. Till I see you down and dead. I will keep speaking. My words for Christ, my words for the Holy Ghost, will be the last words, enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My words for Christ will be the last words. The Lord and I, we are one, and we will speak the final word. You will have the final word in this manner. Right. You will have the final word in this problem. Yes. We have the final word. Yes. And I will speak the final word. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We love our shrink with your home. Thank you, God. Just pray in the spirit, Charlie. I don't know what else to do right now, but just be the spirit and just, just 
Exercise the word of God. Exercise the truth of God. Exercise the, this, this, this mind of God. This word of God. Maybe you don't see yourself spiritually growing and say, no, by the grace of God, I will grow in the Lord. I will grow in the ways of God. Hallelujah. I will grow in the truth of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God Lord. Thank you, God Lord. And by the Holy Ghost, just give the final word to the enemy and that's it. You will not speak back. And if you do speak back, I will speak back again. And if you do strike, I will strike again. And I will make sure my words are final words. Hallelujah. Yes. My words are final words because they are words of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. The words of the Lord. And my words will be the final words. Hallelujah. Yes. Will all be the final words. Hallelujah. Yes. Because that Christ has been to the cross of Calvary. I will live in victory. Hallelujah. Yes. I will not live in defeat. I will not live in defeat. I will not live in poverty. I will not live in struggles. I will not live in mental problem or emotional problem or physical problem. I have a final word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those who feel there's still days in your life that you really want to keep the final word and just want to do it together as a family, a family, and you want something urgent in your life, some issue in your family or in your life that perhaps you spoke words, but you're stuck halfway through or quarter way through and you're not really pushed through, but you just want to exercise a few more minutes before you go down to eat. Why don't we all come together? Come. If you're like that, just come together to the front. Because there's power, there's strength and unity. There's strength and unity. On the day of Pentecost, we read they're all in one accord. Just come. The only thing in your life about future or now is unclear. Any wants to the final word <coughs> about your ministry, about your calling. That is hard for you to say the final word. You said it, but it seems like enemy wants the final word. But no, you're determined. Anyone like that? You want to come? Just come. Just to come. You can just hold our hands together and together declare that in this area we have the final word. Hallelujah. Like Jesus. Like Goliath. I have a final word.